Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK back at you with another video here for the NBA main slate here on Tuesday. Uh, we got a five game slate. Real quick, let's see how we're currently doing Monday night. So Monday night, pretty frustrating to be honest. Had a couple busts here with Randall and with Zubak. Um, Zubak was just, you know, nothing to go right. He got in some foul trouble. Um, and then Carl Anthony Towns got in foul trouble. So both teams ran small ball for a long time, keeping both the bigs on the bench. So this is a really unfortunate situation. Montrezl Harrell played really, really well. And the Clippers were playing really well small ball. So Minnesota matched for a while. They, both the bigs sat on the bench. It was like, not like, that was, it was just uh, really, really frustrating. So I, again, I apologize if I talk to you guys on the Zubak. I will take the L on that. But, you know, realistically, a 4K starting center for, um, you know, I would project it at him to play at least 25 minutes against a big Minnesota team. It was just Really, really bad luck. Um, again, we can't we can't be results oriented. I think Zubak was still really solid play. It's just uh, shitty luck tonight. And then Randall here, you know, I I got on him just because obviously Santa Rancy was out. I really thought he had a floor of like twenty five or thirty minutes and a floor of at least like fifteen fantasy points, and he just he didn't do anything. He he you know he was when he got minutes he was pretty productive, but just tonight. Um, just very, very bad. Again, I think the process is right there, basically a minimum price starting point guard. Um, it was just, he just, he couldn't hit a shot. He played, played, he played really bad. Um, and then I went with, you know, I, I like this Knicks-Cleveland game, so I went with Dennis Smith Jr., Kevin Knox, and of course, like Kadeem Allen had a career night, so Dennis Smith Jr. kind of, you know, he didn't do bad, but he definitely could have done better. Knox is okay. Nance, I really liked him. He was solid, but I mean, he was high-owned. Lillard, um, he was really good, 54 fantasy points for 8.6K. Bobby Portis, talked about him. I liked him. And then Towns actually ended up not doing terrible. But, yeah, just a frustrating night. And, again, guys, um, you know, I apologize for Zubak. It's just <sighs> shitty luck. But what can you do? I'm ready to move on for um, this slate on Tuesday. Okay, so like I said, uh, we got five games. And... A pretty interesting slate. So, I really personally, after like after looking at this, um, you know, five game slate, I really really like this Lakers and Atlanta game. I think that's definitely the most game stackable game. But you also have, you know, the San Antonio Memphis game is kind of gross. But Orlando New Orleans, um, you know, that has potential. Same thing with Boston Philly with no Kyrie. Um, there is a little blowout risk since that Philly, but um, that also has you know fancy goodness and then Utah Golden State um, there is some blowout risk since that Golden State but if Utah keeps it close that can could be pretty well as pretty good as well so um, yeah let's let's just get right into it so uh, Steph Curry here at 9k going up against the Jazz um, obviously not the best matchup but um, you know whenever we can project Golden State to you know the starters to play the full minutes um, you know that's when we can target them and I think this I haven't really, I don't know if the spread's out now, but I'd assume it'd be, I don't know, like 10, 11 points, 10, 11 point spread. So, um, you know, you definitely can target some of these Golden State guys. Um, me, as of right now, I'm probably not going to go that way. You know, I really like the Lakers Atlanta stack uh, for GPPs, but um, I think the Utah Golden State game does have potential. A Drew Holiday here at 8.5. He's going to play all the minutes he can handle in a close game. Obviously, Anthony Davis being back, and um, he's going to play you know, probably right around 30 minutes. That hurts Drew Holiday's usage a bit, um, but I still think he's okay. Donovan Mitchell, if Utah's going to stay close, I think Mitchell's going to have to have a pretty solid night. Um, so 8.3K. If you, if you like this Golden State-Utah uh, game, I would definitely you know include Donovan Mitchell in that game stack. Conley, I get it. Um, but it's just the San Antonio Memphis game seems really gross to me. Um, I don't know. You know Conley is going to be, you know, he's a really high usage, obviously, with Marcus Gasol out of there. So I understand if you want to play Mike Conley. Uh, it's just my personal opinion. I'm probably not going to look that way. Then you got a lot of the, you know, Boston, Philadelphia guys. Uh, ben Simmons. Uh, with the addition of Tobias Harris, um, his price has dropped a bit. But also, you know, only 21 and 25 fantasy points. There's a lot of mouths to feed now in Philly. Um, so I'm a little, you know, undecided on what I want to do with Philly. Then you got Rozier. Um, you know, with Kyrie, 
out. You know, he's a solid play, but the price, he's not cheap. You know, 6.9K, that's kind of a lot to play for Terry Rozier. Um, but I think a couple of these Boston guys, um, if Boston keeps it close, are going to have solid nights. So let's go to Boston really quick and go to utility. So obviously no Kyrie. So the playable guys, in my opinion, Rozier, Horford, Tatum, Brown, Morris, Smart, Hayward, possibly Tice, uh, maybe even Robert Williams. Maybe he gets some minutes to guard Embiid. Uh, but I really think it's Rozier, Horford, Tatum, Brown, Morris, Smart, Hayward. Um, those are the guys you really want to target here. So it's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so seven guys, um, all priced in between, what, 6.9 and 4.7. Um, you know, I don't really have a strong feeling on, you know, who I really want from this group. But I think definitely playing a, a couple of Boston guys is not the worst idea here. With Kyrie out, that's, that's a lot of usage to go around. Okay, so let's go back uh, to point guard here. And Trey Young, I really, really like this play here. Uh, they just shipped Jeremy Lin out to Toronto. So, uh, you know, Trey Young at 6.7K at home, going up against the Lakers. Um, I really like him. Um, again, I, I like this game stack a lot. So, um, Trey Young is one of my favorite plays of the night here at 6.7K. He should play, you know, 30, 35 minutes, I would guess, to know Jeremy Lin. Rondo, you know, I would like if he's going to start, but he surprisingly came off the bench and only played 16 minutes. I'm going to wait for more news. If the Lakers keep that same starting lineup, then I'm probably not going to look Rondo's way. Now, I would guess he could still get you there in 20 to 25 minutes, um, but I would probably just go elsewhere. Rubio, kind of the same thing with Mitchell. Um, if, you, if you like this game a lot, then you know, I would definitely you know, try to get Rubio down with Mitchell, maybe even go Bear in there. Uh, those would be like the main guys in Utah that I would want. Ingram, I do really like him. Um, he's going to play most of the game. Um, this is a really good match here against Atlanta. Uh, 5.5K. I know LeBron being back you know, hurts some of these Lakers guys, but it's just the price tag on a lot of these Lakers guys. It makes them really, really um, appealing. Marcus Smart here. Um, again, a couple of these Boston guys. You know, I don't, I don't really have a strong feeling on know who I want from Boston, but definitely I would consider playing a couple of those guys. Let's see, Alfred Payton. Um, so he, he could be back here. He's been out for a little bit. Um, personally, I, I'm probably not going to go the way. He's, they're probably going to limit him. These cheap guards, you know, DJ Augustine, this is a pretty appealing matchup. You never feel great about playing him, and the minutes have been really up and down. But I think he would be in play. Uh, Lance Stevenson. I think it was a decent buy low here, 3.9. He kind of had an off night against Philly, got limited. Uh, but with Josh Hart going to be out for a bit, I think Lance pushes for you know, close to 20 minutes in a really good matchup. So um, I kind of like the buy low here on Lance Stevenson. Uh, okay, let's move on to shooting guard. So DeRozan here, I mean, obviously the price tag makes him pretty appealing at 7.3. It's just a kind of gross game with San Antonio Memphis. I do think this game goes really low owned. So, you know, if you want to take that ownership aspect of it and you know, maybe stack it, I think it goes really, really low owned. Maybe you get lucky, it goes into overtime or something. Um, let's see. Jimmy Butler. Again, I'm a little on this, this Boston Philly game. I'm kind of torn. There's, I don't really know who I want from Boston. And then on the Philly side, there's so many mouths to feed, um, you know, it's, you got Embiid, you got Ben Simmons, you got Jimmy Baller, Tobias, and J.J. Redick. Um, I'm a little undecided on what I want to do with Philly here, too. Um, right now, like I said, I'm just leaning towards stacking L.A. and Atlanta, but the Boston-Philly game definitely has some you know, fantasy goodness. So I think there is um, a lot of potential in that game. Uh, Clay Thompson at 6.1. Um, I think it's a pretty solid play here. He's been playing really well, but also shooting the ball pretty well. You know, I don't know if we can expect him to keep shooting this well. Um, but a 6.1K, I think he's firmly in play. You know, he's going to play most of the game in a close game. Um, so I think Clay is a pretty solid mid-tier option here. Uh, Terrence Ross. So, uh, I don't know. I don't like playing scoring-dependent guys, but he's been playing some really good basketball, and the matchup's really solid here. 5.4K, I think he is in play. Evan Fournier, the same thing here, but, you know, the minutes are what I, got, I like seeing here. 35, 34, 32, and 34 minutes. 
Um, at 5.2K, an appealing matchup. Um, Evan Fournier looks also pretty appealing. Um, let's see. the wing, So the wings here for Atlanta, it's going to be kind of hard to predict, but I think they all get a little boost with Jeremy Lin out. You know, a couple minutes boost, you know, Herter, Bazemore. Um, I'll get to my favorite Atlanta wing here in a bit. Um, but I think, you know, you could take a shot on one of these guys if you wanted to. KCP, you know, he probably is going to play around 25 minutes. But me personally, I would rather put, uh, play Lance Stevenson off the bench. Which, um, I just think he has higher, you know, I like playing the high usage guys off the bench. LeBron here at 10.5. Um, you can't get a better matchup than Atlanta. The only worry is that the Lakers, you know, blow him out. And we, I have seen in the past LeBron just kind of take games off and really be, you know, really defer to the other guys. So that would be the only concern. But right now, I'm leaning towards playing LeBron. Again, Durant. Um, I think this game is definitely, you know, definitely can stack it. Um, if Utah can keep it close. Um, but me personally, again, I, I really do like the Lakers and Atlanta game. Aaron Gordon just seems too cheap here at 6.4. So he got he got injured in one game or kind of got you know shaken up and then got in foul trouble. Um, but you know in a close game I think he plays thirty plus minutes at least. This is a really appealing matchup. Um, so I kind of like to buy low here on Aaron Gordon. Kuzma really really like this play. I think he's gonna be chalky. Um, obviously thirty eight and forty six fantasy points. People are gonna be box score watching. Uh, but it's just such a good matchup. I I do really just, I love this game. Jonathan Isaac, even, um, he's been surprisingly pretty consistent. Um, at 5.1K, um, he should play right around 30 minutes. Uh, you know, a lot of these Magic guys in the 5K range are, are definitely in play. You know, I'm not huge on playing those secondary Magic pieces. Usually it's Aaron Gordon and Vucevic for me, and that's it. But a lot of those guys in the 5 tier range, like Ross, Fournier, um, Jonathan Isaac, those guys are definitely in play. Okay, so let's get to my favorite wing for Atlanta is Torian Prince. I know the Mets have been a little up and down, but they're going to need his defense on LeBron. Um, we've seen in the past when they played Golden State, Torian Prince could played all the minutes he can handle. Look what happened when they played Toronto against Kawhi Leonard. He played 37 minutes. So they need Torian Prince's defense to guard LeBron. So that's why I do really like Torian Prince. If he can just stay out of foul trouble, I think he just plays 35 or so minutes. They're going to need his defense to guard LeBron. So... I do really like Torian Prince today. Normally, I stay away from the Atlanta Wings, but I'm taking a stand here. I like Torian Prince at 4.5K. Um, I think that's it. Okay, let's move on to power forward. Uh, Anthony Davis. So, got limited to 25 minutes, but then against Memphis, played 34 minutes. So... You know, you got an underpriced Anthony Davis here at 10.3, an appealing match against Orlando. If he's going to play close to 35 minutes, um, I think Anthony Davis is a really solid spend up here. Um, so I'm definitely considering him. Right now, I'm probably leaning towards LeBron, but Anthony Davis, I think, has huge upside um, if he's going to play 35 minutes. Let's see, John Collins, I would really like, but God, it's just the minutes are so up and down with him. Um, you know, 17, he got injured there. 39, 32, 35, 25. Like, if the mints are more consistent, I would really like him. I still, you know, am considering him at 7.6K because I do think he has some upside here. Uh, Tobias, again, I'm a little torn on this Boston Philly game. I just don't, you know, I don't really know what to do. Again, Boston, I think about playing a couple of those guys. On the Philly side, there's so many mouths to feed that I don't know. I'm a little undecided on honestly what I want to do. Um, let's see. Draymond, I got kind of the same thing with all the Golden State starters. Um, if you think Utah can keep it close, I think you know you could play a couple of these Warriors. It's kind of my same analysis with the Golden State a lot. You know, it's always just if the other team can keep it close, then a couple of the Warriors can have solid games. Um, let's see. Deadman, Alex Len, you know, Lakers kind of like running small ball. They, you know, they like Kuzma running at the center a little bit. Um, but I think Deadman and Len, you know, play some decent minutes. So I don't think he's the worst play in the world here at 4.5. Uh, 
know, seems to be, you know, at least played 20, 25 minutes. So I think he's definitely in play. Okay, let's move on to center. So Embiid here at 10.2, going to be going up against Boston. Um, he's had a pretty big game here against the Lakers. Uh, Boston going to be undersized. You know, they got Horford. Um, they can throw Daniel Tice on him, but Joel Embiid should have his way at 10.2K. I think he's pretty solid. Busevich going to be going against, against the defense against Anthony Davis. Um, you know, AD, not the best defender. So at 9.5K, I think Busevich has some pretty big upside. Um, unfortunately, he got limited in a blowout against Atlanta to only 29 minutes, but he's on his way for a huge night. Um, so I think he is definitely in play. Gobert, the same thing, it would be. For the Utah guys, it would be Gobert, Mitchell, and Rubio, and that's probably about it. Um, so if you think Utah can keep it close, I would target those three guys from the Jazz. Randall, 7.4. I think, you know, not the worst play, but not the best play with Anthony Davis playing. We also got Jaleel Okafor uh, going to be back, so maybe that limits Randall here a bit. So I'm probably not going to look his way. You know, Jaron Jackson Jr., Ivan Robb. Um, you know, they were solid plays for a while, and Memphis was really shorthanded. Now we got Joe Kim Noah back, and Joe Kim Noah had, like, a career night the other night. Definitely wouldn't expect that again. Um, you know, it's always risky targeting Jaron Jackson Jr. because he does get in foul trouble, but 6.2K, I think he's a little underpriced. Uh, Rob, same thing here. Both these guys seem to be, you know, they want to play him, it seems like, right around 30 minutes. I know the matchup, you know, not the greatest here against San Antonio, but... Um, I think both those guys are, are solid plays. Boogie kind of had an off night against Miami, only 21 fantasy points, but the price dropped to 6.2k, um, where you know him and Clay Thompson are probably my favorite Warriors just because um, you know they're definitely affordable. McGee, I really really like McGee here. Uh, the ship Zubak out of there to the Clippers. Um, so he played 30 and 26 minutes each of the last two games. Atlanta does like running big. So I think McGee, if he stays out of foul trouble, pushes for 30 minutes. Um, so I do really like him here at 4.8. Joe Kim Noah, again, he had that career night, 42 fantasy points. I don't know if we can expect that again. Um, but at 4K, I don't think he's the worst value play in the world. And then Alex Len here. Mint's been a little, you know, not the best here, 14, 6, 11, and 9. But whenever we can project him to get minutes, um, that's when you can target him at 3.5K. Uh, it's a stretch. I think maybe just in like small field GPPs. Like, it's just the minutes are just not really there for him. And yeah, I think that's about it. So honestly, guys, my lineup as of right now, what I'm thinking of doing. Um, again, this is just a personal preference. I've been sticking to GPPs a lot. So I, I've been liking a lot of the game stacks. But I think I'm right now, this is... Let me go to uh, point guard here. I'm honestly thinking my lineup's going to look something like this. And then Torian Prince. And then, oh, if it'll let me choose him. And then pick my last two guys here at 6K. So, honestly, that's I, I do really like this game stack. And I, I like this the way this lineup looks a lot. Um, if Atlanta keeps it close, which it should, I think it's like a four-point spread from what I saw. Um, there should be no defense played in this one. Um, so I do really like this game stack, and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards as of right now. But, um, again, that's just personal preference. I understand, you know, this Orlando-New Orleans game is definitely, you know, viable. Same thing with Boston-Philly. I just don't have the best read on what, you know, what I want to do with that game. And then Utah-Golden State, if you think Utah can keep it close, um, that one's also, you know, pretty appealing as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I'm sorry, again, if I kind of jumped around here a few different ways. Uh, but, yeah, um, like I said, I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Uh, if you have been enjoying the content, please like this video subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. It's also important to follow me on Twitter. That will be in the description below. I'll give my thoughts some more news comes out throughout the day. And, yeah, hopefully we don't get, um, you know, another Vichia Zubak um, like tonight or just a huge bust. So, uh, let's stay away from the big bus and let's win some money. So I'll be back for another video on Wednesday. I'll see you guys then.